So we've now looked at the two main components of a transitional complex. We've looked at the metal ion itself, the fact it's electron deficient, the fact it's got empty d orbitals which can receive electrons. And we've looked at the ligands, the things which have lone pairs which can form coordinate bonds to your metal ion to make um, the metal ion happy having received some electrons. The final part of the puzzle in terms of forming a complex or working out what a complex look like, looks like is the question of, well, how do you know how many ligands to put around the metal ion? Because in some cases it seems to be a different number. The concept we're looking at there is the idea of the coordination number, which is mentioned halfway up page three. The number of lone pairs of electrons which a cation can accept is known as the coordination number of the cation. Another way of putting that maybe a wee bit more simply is just this, the idea that the number of coordinate bonds you form to the metal ion is the coordination number. So in the, the examples on the bottom, um, can we come back to them? It's just you've got six coordinate bonds there in each case, therefore you'd say that the metal ions in each of these cases has a coordination number of six for six coordinate bonds. In terms of what determines what coordination number you get, there's two factors here. It depends on the size and electrons of the cation. For example, a really small cation might not be able to fit um, so many bonds around it, but a really big one might be able to take a few more bonds around it. And also the size and charge of the ligand. Again, if you've got really big ligands, they might be a bit crowded to, to fit too many of them around the same atom. If they're really small, you can fit quite a few in there. So those are two factors to kind of consider. However, there isn't really a hard and fast rule about what the coordination number should be for a particular um, metal ion. In a lot of cases, they'll just have to give you information to work out what that's going to be. You can't just work it out yourself in every case. However, there are some general trends you can maybe kind of think about. Um, six coordinate complexes are all octahedral, so we're going back a wee bit to what we looked at with shapes in AS level. Generally, you'll find six coordinate complexes, coordination number six, if you've got very small ligands. Molecules like water and um, ammonia all contain elements in the first and second periods of the periodic table. They're all quite small atoms, therefore you can fit quite a lot of these molecules around a central atom before they get too crowded. So the more bonds you form, the more energy. So if you can fit six round, it's going to give you a lot more stability than four or two. So we would call these octahedral. That is octahedral in the same sense that we looked at last year. It does mean they're all at 90 degrees to each other. So the bond angle there is 90 degrees between all the ligands in these complexes. It doesn't matter whether it's just water or just ammonia or a mixture of ammonia and water. The same bond angle is found between all of these ligands in this complex. Now, in some cases, you might not be able to fit quite as many around if you've got slightly larger ligands. So you might not get six uh, coordinate bonds, you might only get four. Four coordinate complexes generally tetrahedral and form the large ligands like chloride. You might not think chloride is that big because it's only got one um, atom to it, but it is from the third period of the periodic table. It is actually quite a large ion. So we can't fit six around our central atom. We can only fit four. And in order to spread them out as much as possible, again, thinking back to shapes in AS level, we wouldn't go in a square planar kind of configuration. We would go tetrahedral with a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. There is one exception to that, however. Um, you will find one example, or you have come across one example already, of a complex which is um, has got four coordinate bonds but is square planar. That would be cisplatin, which we looked at in medicinal chemistry. It's... Um, got this shape to it. So clearly you've got a coordination number of four there, but they're not in a tetrahedral configuration. They actually are in a flat configuration, square planar, with 90 degrees in between. Again, with some iron still, um, you only actually get two coordinate bonds formed. Only really comes across in, in one particular element, and that's with silver ions. Silver generally only supports two bonds formed to itself. So if we've got this complex here with silver two ammonias, um, they'd be formed in a straight line. So that's a linear configuration with 180 degrees between each of the bonds. Again, we've got some rules at the, down the bottom here, which aren't really rules, more guidelines, to be honest. But they go over the key trends. So silver is the only real one that forms linear complexes with the coordination number of two. Chlorides and other large ions, think like your um, 
thiocyanate and ions, things like that, will generally only form complexes with a coordination number of four. However, most other transition metal complexes and for most orientations you'll find will have an octahedral configuration with a coordination number of six.